The following is an exclusive presentation of Ravens Productions. What's up, Ravens fans? Welcome into a fresh edition of Ravens Unscripted, coming to you from the Under Armour Performance Center. We hope you've had a happy and safe holiday week, and no better gift than a chance to clinch a playoff berth with a home game and a win over the Cleveland Browns this Sunday. So a lot to get into on the show. Let me introduce the panel. We've got Garrett Downing of the Ravens Media. We have Jeff Zriebeck of The Athletic and Luke Jones back with us of WNST. And guys, let's start, as we always do, with four downs. All right, first down, Garrett, the defensive performance in L.A. I don't think we should be surprised at this point with what this unit's been able to do, but against Rivers, how surprised were you? I mean, it was really impressive. I think this was certainly the best overall performance that we've seen from the defense this year. They controlled that game, and you can give credit to the offense and Lamar Jackson and, and the way that this offense played, you know, the big play to Mark Andrews. But make no mistake about it, the defense won the Ravens this game. They completely limited what the Chargers were able to do with Phillip Rivers. And here's what I like about this defense is every part of the season, we've kind of had a question like, can they get the stop at the end of the game? Can they do it against a good quarterback? Can they do it on the road? And they have passed every tests along the way and I think this was the most significant test overall impressive performance from this defense and Jeff you were in the building and you've seen a lot of Ravens football yeah. how would you characterize where this unit is right now and how well they're playing you know a lot of it was made uh, heading into the year about the team age and when you look at the the average age of the team a lot of it's on defense with guys like Suggs Carr Jimmy Smith Eric Weddle but that did not, they did not play like an older yeah. defense. And I think what I've been most impressed with um, all year about their defense is how fast they're playing. I mean, those guys were flying around the ball. They were hitting everything in sight. They're bringing guys down in the open field. And the Chargers have some dynamic offensive players. The Ravens' defense looked like the fastest unit on the field that night. And that's saying a lot against that team. And considering they had one, you know, they had a few extra day to prepare, the Chargers were supposed to be the more Rested team, and they did not look like that on uh, you know in the last game. Yeah, they look stunned. Uh, Luke, second down. We'll start with you. I think it's a good time as we head into what is a de facto playoff game to to assess Lamar Jackson. And and we've talked a lot about how it's different with him on the field, but just sort of big picture, how would you best describe the impact he's had? on the personality of this team going forward? Well, I think initially there's an unknown, and that changes the environment. Everyone kind of – they know what they have with Joe Flacco. He's been the quarterback for a long time. But everyone had to step it up because you didn't know exactly how Lamar was going to respond as the starter. I think he's given them a spark. I think we would all agree that he's shown a, 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 an impressive composure throughout these last six weeks, and he's put them in a position where they can go to the playoffs with a win on Sunday. I think the biggest difference with Lamar Jackson is the impact that it has on the entire team. I mean, if you were to just look at quarterbacking ability, Joe Flacco probably has the best quarterbacking ability when you take the entire package. But when you look at Lamar's impact on the entire team, the running game obviously is completely different with him at quarterback. The ability to control the time of possession, the ability to keep teams off the field. And then I think that there's just that mojo factor that he seems to have. He seems to have players kind of rallying around him, both on offense and defense, and I think that's made a difference. I, I don't think anybody wants to play the Ravens because you're just not used to playing this kind of an offense. And, and let's move to third down and, and a perfect transition there from Garrett. This game against the Browns, Jeff, uh, th there's so much into it. I mean, you can look back to 2017, a similar spot. How do you view this matchup against a Browns team that is arguably – as hot as the Ravens yeah. going into this game. Well, first of all, I think, you know, there's going to be some angst given what's happened in the past. But if you asked any person in this building in July if they would have taken an opportunity uh, to be on their home field in Week 17 and have a chance to win the division and get a home playoff game, they would have signed up for it in <laughs> blood. So this is exactly what they wanted. It didn't look like it was going to happen when you're 4-5 and five at the bye and your quarterback is, is banged up. Um, you know, this is a team that has exercised some demons all year. Garrett talked about the defense closing games. There's one more demon to exercise. Now, I, I, you know, Browns are definitely a dangerous team, uh, but I think anybody in the building would have taken this opportunity. Browns have won five of their last six, so do not sleep on what Baker Mayfield and, and Cleveland has been doing. However, even though we can compare it to last year, 
I think this Cleveland team is better than what Cincinnati was in Week 17 last year, but I think the Ravens are a better football team in Week 17 this year than they were last year. And, and Garrett, fourth down here, sort of spinning this forward, which teams don't like to do at all, but <laughs> fans have to do it. The idea that, as Jeff brought up, they win this game. They're at home yep. against the Chargers again, most, most likely. likely. Uh, is that something that this fan base should be thinking about at this point? Yeah, how could you not? I mean, there's so much excitement about the idea of having a home playoff game. I don't think there's anything wrong as a fan base to get excited about that potential. There hasn't been a home playoff game here since 2012. Obviously, that was the year that the Ravens went on to win the Super Bowl. So it's so clear. It's not like you're going into this weekend. you got to do all these different scenarios and say, if these guys lose, yep. if there's a tie here. No, it's simple. You beat the Cleveland Browns in Week 17. You're in the playoffs, and you have a home playoff game. That's a – Ideal against the team you just beat yeah. two against weeks the team ago. You just it, beat. It's, it's a wild thought that, that, to think about where this team's come from, Jeff, and as you touched on, after the bye to where they are now. Yeah, and I mean, I think there's going to be a curiosity uh, of how does a team play Lamar Jackson the second time. Mm, yeah. I think there's, it's a unique challenge. They're going to know the speed. But who cares? Uh, you know, like they have a chance to win the division and host a playoff game for the first time since 2012. So I think it's one of those things where you'll worry about that uh, one extra week. We're off and running here on Ravens Unscripted. Coming up next, these guys are going to step to the front and give you their thoughts with Soapbox. Stay with us. Welcome back to Unscripted. A secret here. Anybody in the media loves a chance to hear themselves talk. So there's no better <laughs> opportunity to do that here on the show than with Soapbox. Each member of the panel here is going to get a chance, 30 seconds, to step in front of our main camera and wax poetic, sermonize about something involving this Ravens team. And we're going to start with the one and only Garrett Downing. you got to set the bar high. You set it up pretty well there, <laughs> and Evan. And I've got 30 seconds and a uh, bell here to let you know when you're done. So... Go ahead, sir. Here's where I stand on the soapbox this week. I know we're all looking forward to Sunday's game against the Browns and the possibility of getting into the playoffs, but I don't think that we can move on completely from that win against the Chargers. To me, this was one of the most impressive wins that we've seen from the Ravens since the Super Bowl. You go back over the past five years and look at the teams the Ravens have beat. I don't think that yeah, they've like beaten a team on the road in this kind of environment that measures up to what they did against the Chargers. Yes, they've beaten the Steelers, but that's a rivalry game. This one, the Chargers, a lot of people viewed as the best team in the AFC, one of the best in the league. And Wrap they went out up. there and they won that game. Just it's at the top true, of the list for me. True professional just completely <laughs> blows through the queue. <laughs> this is a man that steps in front of that camera every day on final drive, and you can tell. But a pretty big statement, the idea that this is that big of a, a I mean, win. If they, the one that would obviously most compare would be beating the Steelers on the road in the playoffs yeah. of 2014. Yeah. Yeah. So I get that a lot of people would probably put that ahead. But when you consider where this team is, rookie quarterback, where they were to get to this point, I think that this measures right up with that win. Are you, is, is, is our man off base here? I think he's right. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's so funny. I thought of 2008 when a rookie Joe Flacco and the Ravens went into Dallas and beat the Cowboys in Week 16. That was a Saturday night game as well. Mm. They had to win that one to keep their playoff hopes alive. So there, there's just this but weird to energy. Point, there wasn't as much yeah. built up that could be lost. Sure. I.e. a Joe, which is probably already lost. And, and there's, there's, this just builds on top of itself in the fact that they've come up short and they've come up short and right. they've come up short. Even Saturday's game, the, the plot points were there yeah. for it to happen again, and they got it done. I mean, it was such a huge win for this team. Yeah, I mean, this team's won a lot of games. What they haven't done in recent seasons is they don't have that signature win in December where they went into some place, a tough venue, um, and beat a very good team. And, uh, you know, Sandy, uh, L.A., excuse me, they didn't just beat them. They took them apart. They bullied what teams thought was one of the best teams in the AFC. All right, well, Garrett got us going. Jeff, you're up next. And, and, and look, Jeff's a longtime scribe, a writer. This is all new to him. So we're still going to be as he's, he's brutal be about Jeff's how you do. Great. All right, three, two, and one. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, usually I like to hide behind my byline and uh, not put my uh, face in front of the camera. But this week, the local media is voting for the Ravens' most valuable player. The rules are you vote for a player, which I'm a guy who plays by the rules, so that's exactly what I did. However, 
However, the Ravens' most valuable player is not a single player. It's a position group. This year, That's nobody like has been more valuable than the Ravens' cornerbacks. They'd have allowed them to do everything on defense that they've done. Uh, they've been one of the top groups in the league, and the Ravens' cornerbacks have completely changed the dimension of their entire defense. Mm. All right. I'm gonna, that's pretty good. First time I'm so proud of Jeff. Well didn't, didn't even stumble. <laughs> But corners. I, yeah, I think that's a really good point. As, as I was filling out my MVP ballot, I struggle with this because it's not like there's one player on this defense or yeah. even one player in the secondary that you could really point to and say he is the main guy. Is it Marlon Humphrey? You know, Evan knows how I feel that I've said yeah. Marlon Humphrey is, was probably the best guy on this defense. But I think that you make a great point. This We've seen – this team without good cornerbacks before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just think about how much of a different position the Ravens are in right now. They can play the kind of swarming defense that they want. I love this quarterback group. If it wasn't the corners, who would it be in your mind? <sighs> <laughs> I thought it was the corners. Marlon Humphrey, to me, was my MVP. But I think it's so difficult. This season has just been broken up. Joe Flacco might have been the MVP in September. October, it didn't go well for the entire team. Lamar Jackson, the second half of the year. But I, I go back to these corners. They are the strength yep. of this defense. The defense has been the best unit on this football team. It's why they are where they are right now. All right, Luke. Well, you've got one soapbox under your, <laughs> under your belt. Let's see what you got for uh, round two here. Finish strong here, Luke. <laughs> Three, two, and one. Wink Martindale waited a long time for a second chance. It was not an exciting hire at the time. People saw what happened in Denver, but he has come in. He's put his fingerprints on this defense that had been good the last few years, but he has taken it to another, another level. And I think this defense has been greater than the sum of its parts. There isn't a Ray Lewis in his prime. Ten There's seconds. not an Ed Reed or even a Terrell Suggs in his prime, but he's gotten the most out of the depth that he has. He's been innovative, and this team this defense has led the way for a team on the cusp of the playoffs really well done that? Luke. can you feel better <laughs> the second, the second time, time around, around. Yeah. nice job and, and and look this is something we've had fun talking about on this couch when we were rolling not rolling i mean the coaching kind of candidacy season that yeah. is upon us here really after week 17 for a lot of teams is is Wink's name going to start floating around in these these circles? You think? Yeah, I mean, look, everyone wants the next Sean McVay or Matt Nagy. Everyone wants the mm -hmm. young offensive mastermind. Um, but what about a guy who can stop some of these <laughs> offenses? And uh, their defense has played so well. They've been so well coached all year. It's gotten to the point where I can't imagine he's not going to get some interviews. I think if you uh, if owners were watching Saturday's game against the Chargers and everyone's talking about offense and putting up 40 and 50 points and and then the, the flip the script approach is how do you figure out how to stop yeah. these guys? I think there could be owners that are watching the game on Saturday and say, you know what? How do I get the guy that can stop Phillip Rivers And really, if you LA? look at, like, the back quarter of the NFL season, yeah. even, like, the teams like the Saints, they've won some of these games, they've but it's of, been defenses mm -hmm. kind of yeah. it, the regression to the mean mm -hmm. offensively has happened. And also you look at it. This isn't – last year the Ravens played a bunch of backup quarterbacks. This year the Ravens yep. have faced seven Good of the point. top ten offenses in the league, and they still have allowed fewer points than anybody in the league. I mean, that speaks for itself. No question about it. It, it has not been an easy schedule as far as the offenses they've played. And – Again, I'll go back to I don't think there is a bona fide superstar. There are some names yeah. that have been superstars in the past, and they're still valuable, but I just think this defense has been greater than the sum of its parts when you really look at it. Well, Luke's not going to say it, but I will. Wink, if, if you get a, a pay bump or a new job, <laughs> Luke wants 10%. <laughs> well done, guys. Coming up next, it's the rating game. Long-time staple here on Unscripted, it's the rating game. As you can see, the panel have these trusty Microsoft Surface tablets. I'll present a statement that needs a metric, a number next to the opinion, if you will, usually one through ten, and the guys will put it on the pad, and we'll see who the outlier is. So first up, Mark Andrews has had a big-time rookie season. Guys, is he the next Todd Heath? One being, Evan, you're nuts, and ten being Heap 2.0. So we got a four, a three, and a six. So let's stay with the positive side. You see a little heap here in Mark Andrews. I actually do think just physically, you know, when the Ravens drafted Hayden Hurst, a lot of the comparisons were Hayden Hurst could be the next Todd Heap, first round draft pick and all that. But I always felt like physically Mark Andrews was more of a Todd Heap. He's a bigger guy, sort of that bowling ball kind of a player. Um, so – you know, to put him in the category of he is clearly next to Heap, he's going to be in the ring of honor. Let's go ahead and, and get him a gold jacket ready. I'm not going there yet, but I've been incredibly impressed with Mark Andrews the entire 
season. He shows up in big games. He's not afraid of the moment. He makes tough catches. He's showed he's got a little bit of speed. Everyone was doubting his speed, but he showed that off on Saturday. So I don't know how you can not like what you've seen from Mark Andrews this year. Yeah, I, I think big body tight ends are kind of making a renaissance here in the NFL uh, across the league. Well, next up, and we want to spend some time on this one because this is fun. How excited are you guys about the <laughs> Baker Mayfield versus Lamar Jackson matchup here in week 17? Obviously, both coming out of last year's draft. Possibly this is something we'll see in this division for years to come. <laughs> I got a one from Garrett, a nine and a nine. So, uh, Jeff, you you feel good about this. We'll hear from sure. Garrett in a second. I, I, you know, look, I think you have to include everything and everything, the game of this magnitude, the time of year. Um, but right now, they're two of the most young, exciting quarterbacks in the league. They're what everyone's talking about right now. And when you put those two guys together – and you include the stakes of the game, I think this is going to be awesome. I, I just think this is going to be great theater. Um, we, we already saw Baker Mayfield face the Ravens, but I think we can all agree that was a, it seems like it was two years yeah. ago. And he's it, a different player. Yeah, completely, and they're doing a lot more innovative things on offense. So uh, I'm excited to see uh, this hot young quarterback against the league's best defense, and I'm excited to see how another team deals with Luke, Lamar Luke, do you Jackson. think it's going to feel like Oklahoma, Louisville uh, <laughs> on, a, on a Sunday? I don't know about that, but I think about the possibilities you have two division rivals with rookie quarterbacks taken in the first round, and they both have had success as a rookie. Let's think about the possibilities. Big stakes in Week 17, I get that. That's what everyone's focused on. But if this works out for both teams, we might be, see, be seeing Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson for the next 10 years, and this could be the next epic quarterback rivalry in the National Football League. Long way to go, but the possibility is there. Let's let Garrett rain on this uh, lovely parade. I agree with everything these guys have said. If I could remove myself from it and just look at it objectively from an entertainment value, yeah, this is great. I'm thinking about it from the Ravens getting into the postseason. I would much <laughs> prefer if you go back like in 2014 when they played the Browns at the end of the season. I think Connor Shaw yeah, was the starting yeah. quarterback for the Browns. I think a lot of Ravens fans would prefer that type of game versus going up against a red-hot Browns team with Baker Mayfield as a quarterback. Much tougher test this week, so I'm just thinking about it selfishly. Evan. Yeah, credit. I mean, it, we know where Garrett's uh, bread is buttered here, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and, and he's making smart decisions. Uh, <laughs> lastly, guys, predictions. As we often say, not necessarily a score and who wins, but something you think you'll see, Luke, when you start. I think we're going to see a close game, and it's kind of the, the no-duh statement, but every single game the Ravens have played since the bye week has been a one-score game in the fourth quarter. I like the Ravens, but their style of play is not conducive to blowing out teams, and I think there are going to be some nervous moments in the fourth quarter, but I do expect them to win. I think we're going to see the Ravens force some turnovers and rattle, rattle Baker Mayfield a little bit. We haven't seen a whole lot of that. The kid is fearless, and he's going to give you opportunities. And he's going to come in there wanting to rain on the Ravens' playoff chances. Um, you know, I think he says, I woke up feeling dangerous. <laughs> I expect him to feel fully dangerous, but uh, the Ravens' defense provides plenty of danger, too. And there will be opportunities for them to make plays. I think the Ravens exercise the demons of last year and that they get over that hump and they don't have a letdown. You know, they've already lost to the Browns. They're not overlooking them at all. And they know what Baker Mayfield can do. So I think that this actually is a game where the Ravens come out and they win by maybe a touchdown or 10 points, where they look like they are the better team. They control this game, and they and they play their way into the postseason. I don't necessarily think it's going to be the the fourth quarter. You need to stop with two minutes left. I don't expect that. As, as good as I think the Browns are, um, I think that the Ravens handle their business and win fairly confidently. I like this. Garrett dropping the hammer as we close out the show with really a score and who wins. Totally blowing through the rules of this segment. But there are tickets, more importantly, still available. Available for this game. You can head to BaltimoreRavens.com backslash tickets if you want to head to this big game on Sunday. And if they win and make the postseason, we'll be right back here on this couch to break down a wild card matchup. So enjoy the game, everybody.